Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Isaiah 58 verse 6. Fasting is a powerful spiritual discipline that has been practiced for thousands of years. It's a way to humble ourselves, draw closer to God, and seek His guidance. But why is fasting so significant in the eyes of God? What makes it such a transformative practice? Fasting isn't just about abstaining from food, it's a profound way to demonstrate our dependence on God and our desire to seek His presence above all else. When we fast, we are essentially saying that our spiritual needs are more important than our physical ones. This act of prioritizing the spiritual over the physical opens us up to a deeper connection with God, allowing us to hear His voice more clearly and understand His will for our lives. In the Bible, fasting is often associated with repentance and seeking God's favor. When the people of Nineveh repented at Jonah's preaching, they declared a fast and put on sackcloth as a sign of their sincerity, Jonah 3 verses 5 to 10. Likewise, King David fasted and prayed earnestly for God's mercy and forgiveness, 2 Samuel 12 verse 16. These examples show that fasting is not just about physical deprivation but a heartfelt expression of our need for God's intervention and grace. Jesus himself fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness before beginning his public ministry. This period of fasting was a time of preparation and empowerment for Jesus, demonstrating the vital role of fasting in spiritual readiness and resilience. In Matthew 4 verse 2, it is written, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Yet, despite his physical hunger, Jesus emerged spiritually stronger, ready to fulfill his divine mission. But fasting isn't just for biblical figures, it is a practice that we can incorporate into our own lives to experience profound spiritual benefits. By fasting, we can seek God's guidance in times of decision-making, intercede for others, and gain victory over personal struggles. It's a discipline that can break the chains of addiction, bring healing, and foster a deeper sense of purpose and clarity. Have you experienced the power of fasting in your own spiritual journey? How has fasting helped you draw closer to God and seek His guidance? Share your thoughts and experiences in the chat, and let's encourage one another on this spiritual path. Before we continue, make sure to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's journey together toward deeper spiritual understanding and growth. Another concern is the fear of failing to receive spiritual benefits from fasting. Some people worry that their fasts will be in vain if they do not experience immediate results or profound spiritual insights. It's important to approach fasting with Patty. The apostles also practiced fasting. After Jesus ascended into heaven, the early church continued the practice of fasting. In Acts 13 verses 2-3, we read that the leaders of the church in Antioch were fasting and worshiping the Lord when the Holy Spirit instructed them to set apart Barnabas and Saul, Paul, for the work to which he had called them. They fasted, prayed, and laid their hands on them, sending them off on their missionary journey. This example shows how fasting was integral to seeking God's direction and blessing in the early church. Another instance is found in Acts 14 verse 23, where Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for the churches in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. They did this with prayer and fasting, committing them to the Lord. This highlights how fasting was not just a personal discipline but a communal practice in the early church, used to seek God's guidance and blessing for leadership and ministry. Fasting, as seen throughout the Bible, is deeply intertwined with prayer. It is a way to humble ourselves before God, to seek His face earnestly, and to intercede for others. Whether it's seeking guidance, expressing repentance, or preparing for a significant task, fasting creates a focused time for us to connect with God on a deeper level. Reflecting on these biblical examples, we see that fasting is not a one-size-fits-all practice. It can take many forms, from abstaining from all food and drink to partial fasts like the Daniel fast. The key is the heart's attitude and the purpose behind the fast. Are we seeking God's guidance, asking for His intervention, or drawing closer to Him? Whatever the reason, fasting is a powerful tool that, when used with the right intentions, can lead to profound spiritual growth and transformation. Have you ever tried fasting as part of your spiritual practice? What type of fast did you undertake, and what was your experience? Share your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Your experiences can inspire and guide others on their spiritual journey. Before we continue, make sure to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's journey together toward deeper spiritual understanding and growth. Different Types of Fasts Fasting can take various forms, each with its unique approach and purpose. 
Understanding these different types can help you choose the right method for your spiritual journey and physical condition. Let's explore the various types of fasts and what each one involves. The absolute fast is the most stringent form of fasting. In an absolute fast, a person abstains from all food and drink, including water. This type of fast is usually undertaken for a very short period, typically no more than one to three days, due to its extreme nature. Examples of absolute fasts in the Bible include Esther's call for the Jews to fast for three days and nights without food or drink to seek God's favor and protection, Esther 4 verse 16. Another example is the Apostle Paul, who, after encountering Jesus on the road to Damascus, went without food and drink for three days as he awaited further instructions, Acts 9 verse 9. Because of its intensity, an absolute fast should only be attempted if one is in good health and feels a strong spiritual prompting to do so. The normal fast is the most common type of fasting, where a person abstains from all food but continues to drink water. This type of fast can vary in length, from a single meal to several days. During a normal fast, it is crucial to stay hydrated and to listen to your body's signals. Jesus' 40-day fast in the wilderness is an example of a normal fast. He drank water but abstained from food, using this time to prepare for his ministry and to resist the temptations of Satan, Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11. Normal fasts are accessible to most people and can be tailored to fit individual needs and schedules, making them a versatile and effective form of fasting. The partial fast involves abstaining from certain types of food or specific meals rather than all food entirely. This type of fast is more flexible and can be sustained over a longer period. One well-known example of a partial fast is the Daniel fast, where the prophet Daniel chose to eat only vegetables and drink water, abstaining from rich foods, meats, and wine, Daniel 1 verse 12, 10 colon 3. This type of fast can be particularly beneficial for those who need to maintain a certain level of nutrition due to health conditions or demanding daily activities. Partial fasts allow individuals to focus on specific dietary restrictions that can help them draw closer to God and deepen their spiritual practice. Another form of fasting is the intermittent fast, which involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting. This type of fast can be adapted to fit various schedules and dietary needs. For instance, some people might choose to fast for 16 hours each day and eat only during an 8-hour window, while others might fast for 24 hours once or twice a week. Intermittent fasting has gained popularity not only for its spiritual benefits but also for its potential health benefits, such as improved metabolism and increased mental clarity. While not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, intermittent fasting can be a practical way to integrate fasting into a regular routine, making it a sustainable and impactful spiritual discipline. Corporate fasting is when a group of people, such as a church congregation, community, or family, fast together for a common purpose. This type of fasting can strengthen communal bonds and foster a sense of unity and shared spiritual focus. An example of corporate fasting is found in the book of Joel, where the prophet calls the entire nation of Israel to a fast in response to a severe locust plague and a call to repentance, Joel 2 verses 15-16. Corporate fasts can be a powerful way to seek collective guidance, intercede for communal issues, or prepare for significant events or decisions within a group. Another notable type of fast is the juice fast or liquid fast, where individuals consume only liquids, such as fruit and vegetable juices, water, and broth. This type of fast can last from a few days to several weeks and provides a middle ground between a complete fast and a partial fast. Juice fasts can be particularly helpful for those who want to cleanse their body while maintaining a certain level of energy and nutrition. It's a practical way to detoxify the body and can be a suitable option for people who need to maintain higher activity levels while fasting. Lastly, the digital fast is a modern adaptation of fasting, where individuals abstain from digital media and technology, such as social media, television, and internet usage. While not a traditional food fast, a digital fast can be highly effective in reducing distractions and creating space for spiritual reflection, prayer, and connection with God. In today's technology-driven world, a digital fast can help individuals reclaim their time and attention, focusing on what truly matters. It can be a powerful way to disconnect from the constant barrage of information and reconnect with God and loved ones on a deeper level. Each type of fast serves a different purpose and can be adapted to fit personal needs and circumstances. Whether you choose an absolute fast, a normal fast, a partial fast, intermittent fasting, corporate fasting, a juice fast, or even a digital fast, the key is to approach it with the right heart and intention. Fasting is not about the outward act of deprivation but about the inward act of seeking God and deepening your spiritual journey. Have you tried any of these types of fasts? 
What was your experience like, and how did it impact your spiritual life? Share your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Your insights can encourage and guide others who are considering incorporating fasting into their spiritual practice. Before we move on, remember to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's continue this journey together towards deeper spiritual understanding and growth. The Spiritual Benefits of Fasting Fasting is much more than simply abstaining from food, it is a powerful spiritual practice that can bring numerous benefits to our lives. When we fast, we intentionally set aside physical nourishment to focus on spiritual growth and connection with God. This act of self-denial opens the door to many profound spiritual experiences and benefits. One of the primary benefits of fasting is increased spiritual clarity. In our daily lives, we are often bombarded with distractions and noise that can cloud our ability to hear God's voice. By fasting, we quiet the external influences and create a space where we can listen more intently to what God is saying. This heightened sense of spiritual awareness can lead to greater insights, revelations, and a clearer understanding of God's will for our lives. Another significant benefit of fasting is the deepening of our relationship with God. Fasting is an act of humility and dependence on God. When we deny ourselves food, we acknowledge that we are not self-sufficient and that we rely on God's provision and sustenance. This act of surrender can bring us closer to God, fostering a more intimate and personal relationship. As we spend time in prayer and meditation during our fast, we can experience a deeper sense of God's presence and love. Fasting also helps to purify our hearts and minds. Just as our bodies go through a detoxification process during a fast, so do our spirits. Fasting can help us to identify and remove the spiritual clutter and impurities that may be hindering our relationship with God. This process of purification can lead to greater spiritual freedom and a more profound sense of peace and joy. It allows us to let go of negative thoughts, habits, and attitudes, making room for God's truth and righteousness to fill our hearts. Moreover, fasting can lead to significant breakthroughs and deliverance. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of people who experienced miraculous deliverance and answered prayers through fasting. For instance, when King Jehoshaphat faced a vast army coming against Judah, he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people sought the Lord, and God delivered them from their enemies, 2 Chronicles 20 verses 3 to 30. Fasting can be a powerful tool in spiritual warfare, helping us to overcome obstacles, break strongholds, and achieve victories in our lives. Another benefit of fasting is the strengthening of our faith. When we fast, we rely on God to sustain us, which can help to build our trust and confidence in Him. Fasting teaches us to depend on God's strength rather than our own. As we see God provide for us during our fast, our faith is strengthened, and we learn to trust Him more deeply. This increased faith can spill over into other areas of our lives, helping us to trust God more fully in all circumstances. Fasting also enhances our prayer life. During a fast, we are encouraged to spend more time in prayer and communion with God. This dedicated time of prayer can lead to more profound and effective intercession. Fasting and prayer often go hand in hand, creating a powerful combination that can move mountains. When we fast, our prayers can become more fervent and focused, and we may find that our prayer life becomes more vibrant and dynamic. In addition to personal benefits, fasting can have a positive impact on our relationships with others. As we grow closer to God through fasting, we are often led to a greater sense of compassion and empathy for those around us. Fasting can help us to develop a heart for service and a desire to reach out to others in love. It can also bring healing and reconciliation in relationships, as we seek God's guidance and grace in our interactions with others. Fasting can also lead to greater self-discipline and self-control. By denying ourselves food, we practice self-mastery and learn to control our physical appetites. This discipline can extend to other areas of our lives, helping us to overcome other forms of temptation and addiction. Fasting teaches us to say no to our desires and to submit our will to God's will. This self-control can be incredibly empowering and can lead to greater freedom and victory in our lives. Furthermore, fasting can foster a sense of community and unity among believers. When we fast together with others, whether in a church setting or with a group of friends, we share a common purpose and experience. This shared act of worship can strengthen our bonds with one another and create a sense of solidarity and support. Corporate fasting can also amplify the spiritual impact, as we join our hearts and prayers together in seeking God's face. Fasting can also heighten our sense of gratitude and appreciation for God's blessings. When we abstain from food, we become more aware of the many blessings we often take for granted. This increased awareness can lead to a greater sense of thankfulness and contentment in our lives. 
As we recognize God's provision and goodness, we are moved to praise and worship Him more fully. Lastly, fasting can be a powerful witness to others. When people see the positive changes and spiritual growth in our lives as a result of fasting, they may be inspired to explore fasting themselves. Our testimony of how God has worked in our lives through fasting can encourage and motivate others to seek a deeper relationship with God. Fasting can thus have a ripple effect, spreading spiritual renewal and revival within our communities. Have you experienced any of these benefits through fasting? How has fasting impacted your spiritual journey? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your stories can inspire and encourage others who are considering fasting as part of their spiritual practice. Before we continue, remember to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's continue this journey together towards deeper spiritual understanding and growth. Common Concerns and Misconceptions Fasting, despite its many spiritual benefits, often comes with a host of concerns and misconceptions. These can range from worries about physical health to misunderstandings about the purpose and practice of fasting. Addressing these concerns and clarifying misconceptions can help individuals approach fasting with confidence and a clearer understanding. One of the most common concerns about fasting is its impact on physical health. People often worry that abstaining from food will lead to weakness, dizziness, or other health issues. It's important to recognize that while fasting does involve a degree of physical discomfort, it is generally safe when done properly. It's essential to stay hydrated, drink plenty of water, and listen to your body signals. For those with medical conditions or concerns, consulting a healthcare professional before starting a fast is a wise precaution. There are also various types of fasts that can be adjusted to fit individual health needs, such as partial fasts or intermittent fasting. Another major concern is the fear of not being able to complete the fast. Many people worry that they will give in to hunger or cravings and feel like they have failed. It's important to remember that fasting is not about perfection but about intention and effort. It's okay to start small and gradually increase the duration of your fasts as you become more comfortable. Setting realistic goals and seeking support from a faith community or fasting partner can also help you stay committed and motivated. If you do break your fast early, don't be discouraged, reflect on what you learned and try again. A common misconception is that fasting is solely about abstaining from food. While food fasting is the most traditional and widely practiced form, fasting can also involve giving up other things that consume our time and attention. For example, some people choose to fast from social media, television, or other forms of entertainment. The key is to eliminate distractions and focus on spiritual growth and connection with God. This broader understanding of fasting can make it more accessible to those who may not be able to abstain from food due to health reasons. Some people also believe that fasting is only for the deeply religious or spiritually mature. This misconception can discourage beginners from attempting to fast, thinking it is beyond their reach. In reality, fasting is a practice that anyone can engage in, regardless of where they are on their spiritual journey. It's a way to draw closer to God and grow in faith, and even small steps can have a significant impact. Starting with shorter fasts or partial fasts can be a great way to begin and gradually build up to longer periods as you become more comfortable and experienced. There is also a misconception that fasting should be a somber and gloomy experience. Jesus addressed this directly in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you, Matthew 6 verses 16-18. This teaching highlights the importance of maintaining a positive and discreet attitude during a fast. Fasting is a personal and joyful act of worship, not a public display of piety. Another concern is the fear of failing to receive spiritual benefits from fasting. Some people worry that their fasts will be in vain if they do not experience immediate results or profound spiritual insights. It's important to approach fasting with patience and trust in God's timing. Spiritual growth often occurs gradually, and the benefits of fasting may not always be immediately apparent. Fasting is about creating space for God to work in our lives, and sometimes the effects are subtle and unfold over time. Trust that your efforts are meaningful, and remain open to the ways God might be moving in your heart and life. There are also practical concerns about managing daily responsibilities while fasting. People often wonder how they can maintain their usual activities, such as work, school, or caring for family, while abstaining from food. Planning and preparation are key. 
Choose a fasting schedule that fits your lifestyle and responsibilities. For instance, starting with shorter fasts or fasting during less demanding periods can help you adjust. Remember that fasting is not about making your life more difficult but about creating intentional time for spiritual focus. Adjust your activities and expectations accordingly, and don't hesitate to take breaks or modify your fast if needed. Lastly, some people may have misconceptions about the purpose of fasting, thinking it is a way to earn favor with God or manipulate Him into answering prayers. Fasting is not a transactional act but a relational one. It is a way to humble ourselves, seek God's presence, and align our hearts with His will. The primary goal of fasting is not to get what we want but to grow closer to God and become more attuned to His purposes. This perspective shift can help clarify the true value of fasting and remove any misconceptions about its purpose. Understanding these concerns and misconceptions can help you approach fasting with a balanced and informed perspective. Fasting is a powerful spiritual practice that, when done with the right intention and preparation, can lead to profound growth and transformation. Have you had any concerns or misconceptions about fasting? How did you address them? Share your experiences in the comments below, and let's support each other on this journey. Before we continue, remember to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's continue this journey together towards deeper spiritual understanding and growth. Practical Advice for Fasting Fasting can be a deeply rewarding spiritual practice, but it requires thoughtful preparation and a mindful approach to be effective. Here are some practical tips and advice to help you get the most out of your fasting experience, ensuring that it is both spiritually enriching and physically manageable. First and foremost, it is important to set clear intentions for your fast. Why are you fasting? Are you seeking guidance, looking for spiritual breakthrough, or aiming to draw closer to God? Defining the purpose of your fast can help you stay focused and motivated. Write down your intentions and refer to them whenever you need encouragement or clarity during your fast. Knowing your why can keep you grounded and determined. Starting small is another crucial piece of advice, especially if you are new to fasting. Begin with a partial fast or a short duration fast, such as skipping one meal or fasting for a few hours. This gradual approach allows your body and mind to adjust to the practice without feeling overwhelmed. As you become more comfortable with fasting, you can gradually extend the duration and intensity of your fasts. For example, you might start with a 12-hour fast, then move to a 24-hour fast, and eventually try a 3-day fast. This incremental approach helps build your physical and mental resilience. Preparation is key to a successful fast. In the days leading up to your fast, start reducing your intake of rich and heavy foods. Eat smaller meals and increase your consumption of fruits, vegetables, and water. This gradual reduction helps your body transition smoothly into the fasting state. Additionally, staying hydrated is essential. Drink plenty of water before, during, and after your fast to keep your body hydrated and to help flush out toxins. Planning your fast during a period when you can manage your schedule and reduce physical and mental stress is also important. Choose a time when you can slow down and focus more on prayer and meditation. Avoid starting a fast during a particularly busy or stressful period, as this can make the fasting experience more challenging and less spiritually fulfilling. If possible, schedule some quiet time or retreat days where you can fully immerse yourself in the spiritual aspects of fasting without the distractions of daily life. During your fast, replace the time you would typically spend eating with prayer, meditation, and reading scripture. This practice helps shift your focus from physical nourishment to spiritual nourishment. Create a quiet and comfortable space where you can spend time with God. Use this time to reflect on your intentions, pray for specific needs, and listen for God's guidance. Journaling your thoughts and experiences during your fast can also be helpful, allowing you to capture any insights or revelations that come to you. Accountability can be a powerful tool during a fast. Consider fasting with a companion or a small group. Sharing your fasting journey with others provides mutual support and encouragement. You can pray for each other, share insights, and hold each other accountable. If you are fasting alone, consider asking a trusted friend or mentor to check in with you periodically to offer support and encouragement. This sense of community can make the fasting experience more manageable and spiritually rewarding. Listening to your body is crucial during a fast. While it is normal to feel some discomfort, such as hunger pangs or fatigue, it is important to recognize the difference between manageable discomfort and signs of distress. If you experience severe dizziness, weakness, or any other concerning symptoms, it may be necessary to break your fast. Fasting is meant to be a spiritual discipline, not a form of self-harm. There is no shame in adjusting or ending a fast if your health is at risk. 
flexibility is also important. Sometimes, life circumstances may require you to modify your fasting plans. For example, if you have a demanding day at work or an unexpected social event, it might be practical to adjust the timing or type of your fast. Being flexible and compassionate with yourself can help you maintain a positive and sustainable fasting practice. Remember, the goal is to draw closer to God, not to adhere rigidly to a specific formula. Refeeding after a fast should be done gradually and mindfully. When you end your fast, start with small, light meals, such as fruits, vegetables, or broths. Avoid jumping straight into heavy or rich foods, as this can shock your digestive system. Take your time to reintroduce food into your diet, and listen to your body's cues. This gentle approach helps your body readjust to eating and allows you to continue experiencing the spiritual benefits of your fast. Integrating fasting into your regular spiritual routine can deepen your relationship with God and enhance your spiritual growth. Consider setting aside regular times for fasting, whether it is once a week, once a month, or during specific seasons such as Lent or Advent. Regular fasting can help you maintain a focused and disciplined spiritual life, creating ongoing opportunities for reflection, prayer, and growth. Have you found any practical tips that help you during fasting? What challenges have you faced, and how did you overcome them? Share your experiences and advice in the comments below. Your insights can support and inspire others who are on their fasting journey. Before we continue, remember to check out our other videos on spiritual growth and biblical teachings. Join the Celestial Chronicles community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's continue this journey together towards deeper spiritual understanding and growth.